It's um, lovely to meet you. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's Thank nice you. to be here. I know you don't like to talk about yourself as a leader of this whole thing, but there just seems to be so much happening these days, whether it's Fifty Shades of Grey or Twilight or like, mm -hmm. do you take any responsibility for <laughs> any well, of I, I know that when I sat down to write about vampires and then when I later wrote Erotica, I wasn't thinking much in terms of having an influence on anybody. I was doing what I found to be intense and um, almost expedient for me personally, emotionally. Uh, I never let it stop me that nobody else at the moment was writing a book with only vampires in the cast. You know, I, I kind of followed my own star and then uh, other people followed their star and here we have this movement today where vampires are mainstream suddenly. Are vampires still cool? Oh yeah, I think, I think vampires are very cool. Are um, zombies kind of taking over? I have not been able to get with the zombie thing. I, I have to do some work on that. <laughs> um, interview with the zombie has not clicked <laughs> in my head. For me, vampires are still the heroes. They're the mystical heroes, the uh, international stars of the monster pantheon. I love them the best. Why they are dress you so the best. <laughs> well, they're certainly very elegant in your novels, yes. a little bit, a yes. little decadent. Sure. Why are you so fascinated with vampires? I don't know. I've always thought they were the greatest metaphor uh, for the outsider in all of us. I felt like an outsider growing up, a misfit. I think a lot of people did or do at some time in their life feel like outsiders, outcasts. And the vampire is a great way to talk about that. He's, he's a larger-than-life mythic hero who is, looks human and can talk to you like a human being, but is actually a monster. And he's immortal. He's outside of life. And I think that's a great metaphor for human beings. So if you had to identify a group of people today as vampires, society's vampires, who would you say? Does anyone come to mind? I would say any outsider, anybody who's ever experienced being despised uh, can identify to some extent with a vampire because the vampire's always been this, um, this creature that's cursed and told he's an abomination, but he's struggling desperately to live like everybody else. And sometimes he's more glamorous and more attractive and more seductive than people around him, but he's still living with that curse. And I think a lot of people go through that in life. There are a lot of groups, minorities that we target and despise and make things difficult for. And they often p find vampire literature very fruitful and, and wonderful and inspiring. Like who? Well, certainly gay people identify a lot with vampire literature. The, ga the gay reviews of my work have been some of the most satisfying reviews I've ever read. Would you call yourself a gay activist? Very much. Very really? much a gay activist, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very well, much. Very much supportive of gay rights. Always have been. And I identify with their struggles. I've never felt any strong gender identity myself. I've always found gender a bit uh, confusing and uh, never been too comfortable with stereotypical female definitions. Yeah. So have you ever written about transsexuals? There's a lot of... I don't in my own daily life know too many transsexuals. I know some and I like them very much. They're, they're marvelous people. Seems to be a new frontier that a lot yeah, of people are... Yeah, it is. And they'll have a lot to teach us. You know, when people are sacrificed that much and go through that much to find themselves and to do what they believe is right, they're going to have spiritual lessons to teach us. But are we all maybe outsiders now? I mean, it's vampires are everywhere, and erotica is everywhere. I well, mean, we're in a very interesting phase. We're in a sort of golden era right now in television and uh, movies and in books uh, for fantasy writers and speculative fiction writers and erotica writers, and it's great. It's great. After many years of being a sort of minority, um, we're now right out there in the big box stores with our books and in Target in the United States and in, in Walmart and so forth. And it's kind of fun to see all these subjects that were once genre subjects that were pushed to the back shelves. You know, women have come out of the closet as people that enjoy erotic literature. They no longer have to disguise it in women's romances with a pirate on the cover. They want erotica. And they don't mind lining up for E.L. James's Fifty Shades of Grey. They don't care who sees them reading their erotic novels on the subway. It, you know, it's, it's a great time. We're, we're Are I, you jealous? Je oh, yeah, because no, when heavens. you you had to put a pseudonym, a nom de plume, when you wrote your well, that was just so my father wouldn't find out. <laughs> yeah, I, I changed to my r real name as soon as I got the courage to tell him. I wrote him a letter and told him, and then I put my real name on the book. How did he react? So no, I am no way jealous of E. L. James. I think she helped all of us. 
my books uh, increased in readership because of E.L. James, and I think she did a wonderful thing for women and for erotic writers. On the, your relationship with the church, I'm just wondering if you've been watching the new Pope. He just seems to be taking a very different approach in terms of some of the things you've written about, like gay relationships and so I on. I think he's pretty wonderful. He's really changed the tone, and he's gotten back to social justice as a real Catholic issue. And the church I grew up in in the 40s and the 50s was really a social justice church. That's what we believed in then as Catholics. We believed in taking care of the poor and taking care of the working man and the family. and and the people that were needy. It was, that was very much part of being Catholic. And the Pope, Pope Francis is, is asking for a return to that. He's saying, let's change the tone. Let's not be so negative about specific issues. And, and let's talk about everything. And let's open our hearts and, and see what God wants us to do. And I think he's been wonderful for the church. I think people are going back in droves because of him. Hmm. And you? Oh, I don't think I'll ever go back, but why make a pronouncement? I mean, you know, <laughs> I might, who knows? Is there a taboo left that you want to tackle that you haven't? I want to write more about ghosts uh, hmm. in my novels. I have a novel about a ghost that I just haven't been able to get to. Why ghosts? I, I think ghosts are evolving on the planet. They're getting stronger and better at coming through and appearing to people. They're evolving the just as, oh sure. Really? They, I've never seen one. but. <laughs> They're evolving just as we're evolving. And, um, but you believe in ghosts? I think the testimony is overwhelming that really? there's something happening there. I mean, so many people over the last couple thousand years have written about their experiences with ghosts. I couldn't discount all of that testimony. There, there's just a lot of material. I have never seen a ghost. I've lived in a haunted house, never saw the ghost. In New Orleans? Yes, I did. I lived for 15 years in a wonderful house that I used in my novels. And uh, it was famously haunted by a woman named Pamela, but I never saw her. What did Pamela say? I never saw her. She never said a thing to me. <laughs> I used to walk around the house in the dark all the time, and Pamela never approached. You've broken so many rules over the decades and tried so many new things. Mm. Do you have any advice for young writers or female writers today? Oh, sure. I, but the advice is always the same. It's, it's, first of all, write. Just do it. Write it. Don't let anyone stop you or discourage you or, or make you feel bad about it. Just write. You want to become a writer, you do it by writing. Go where the pain is. Go where the pleasure is. And treasure your own voice, your own characters, your own vision. Never think you're too weird. Never think you're too crazy. Look, if I can make it, you can make it. Do people still think you're weird? Of course. A person who writes about vampires as if they were real, sure writes novels about Jesus in the first person, yes, they think I'm weird, but it hasn't stopped me, and it never will. Do you think you're weird? Yes, but it's all right. Well, more interesting than being the same as everyone else. Sure. And I, I think at heart everybody's weird. We just don't know it. No. It's been a real pleasure to meet you. Yeah, Thank you. You are just as interesting as I Thank thought. You. Thanks so much. Thanks very much.